Welcome. This is Emerge with Amy LePage, and this is Conversations for Better Health and Well-Being. And I'm here today with Carrie Boyle of Integrative Acupuncture. And we're going to be talking today about some tips for preparing for labor. So Carrie, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more? Sure. Thanks, Amy. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Carrie Boyle. I'm a licensed acupuncturist. I'm in practice at Integrative Acupuncture in Montpelier, Vermont. I've been working with women for helping prepare for labor and delivery for almost 18 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, some of my specialty area is working with fertility, helping women get pregnant, um, helping during pregnancy, staying pregnant, and then helping with um, turning breech position babies and getting labor to get going. So I'm really happy today to be sharing some of my top tips for getting labor going and helping with pain during labor and delivery. Great, great. Well, I know people will be very interested <laughs> to have this as some information for them. Um, so yeah, so why don't you go ahead and share some of the um, acupressure points that you would suggest for people? Sure. So a little bit about acupressure. In fact, the history of acupuncture is from acupressure. So thousands of years ago in China, um, they realized that there was points in the body that helped with creating flow of energy, which we now know today has to do with increase of circulation of blood and relaxation of muscles. Mm. And so these acupressure points were stimulated with hands and massage, and then they used tools like stone, and then they sharpened the stone and eventually used bamboo sticks to puncture mm. needles. And that's, that's the history of acupuncture. Uh, mm. What we know now is that these points, they, they work to increase stimulation of circulation of blood, and they also will create brain changes in the body to get a release of endorphins, uh, which is the body's natural painkiller, mm -hmm. uh, increase circulation of serotonin and dopamine through the body, which creates uh, relaxation. So this is what we want during labor yeah. and delivery, relaxation and pain relief. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool. So Amy, we've been working together for a lot of years now. I've taught mm -hmm. a lot of women these acupressure points. Um, I've also had a chance to use them on friends and family and myself to help labor get going uh, before the birth of my two children. And I've also helped women in labor and really seen a difference that they were stalled in labor. And then all of a sudden things just get going when you really press these points. Yeah. Cool. I want to try them with you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to teach a big point called large intestine four today. Um, in Chinese, it's called hegu, and it's located on the hand. Um, before we start, we should have a little reminder that these points are to be used after week 37 in pregnancy. They're actually points that we don't use once a woman is pregnant. We don't use them throughout the pregnancy until we're ready to get labor going. So if you're at home and you are just ready and you're care providers have said it's time to try all the things to get labor going. This is the time to use these at home. Mm. Um, there's no uh, contraindications of how much you do these points. You can do them for a few seconds. You can do them for a few minutes. Uh, you can have other people do them for you and with you. Um, there should be a dull, achy sensation when you feel it. Mm. Um, and if you feel things start, get going, talk to your provider. If you feel like contractions have increased, this point is used to get labor going. It's also used for pain reduction during labor. It's uh, considered an aspirin point in Chinese medicine. Mm. So this, like when you're sitting in the dental chair and you're having um, dental work done, you can hit this point. It's a point for headaches. So any kind of pain, anything you would take an aspirin for, you would use this. Mm. I've also seen this point get labor going during stalls. So try and remember it if you're in labor and things have kind of stalled out at six centimeters or even nine centimeters, then try and really hit this point and things might get going for you. Cool. Great. All right, let's find it. It <laughs> is between your thumb and your forefinger. So when we do acupressure, your finger is essentially the, the needle. So the, in, the position that you're going to do is perpendicular. So it's just like this. Mm -hmm. The way we find it is we squeeze our thumb and forefinger together, just like that. And you'll find a little mound bumps up there. Yeah, I feel it. Very tippy top of that mound, put your finger perpendicular and then relax your hand. You've ah. used it to, so you got to relax it now and then press straight down. And then move it in a circle. Your finger moves in a small concentric circle. 
The shape of an acupressure point is, is a vortex. It's a cone. So oh. right at the tippy top of the skin is the largest diameter. But as you get down into the point, when you like insert an acupuncture needle, it actually becomes very fine and small, the diameter. So try to imagine that as you mm. press down perpendicular, yeah. access that cone, and then cir circular motion, yeah. make your circle tighter and tighter. Tighter and tighter as you get deeper and dull ache. Yeah, that makes sense. Great. You feel it? It should be like a dull yeah. ache. Yeah, yeah. Try it on the other side too, because all mm. acupressure points are located perpendicular, or excuse me, are located mm. bilateral. Mm. So same thing. Mm -hmm. Press down. Little circles. Large intestine. Great. <laughs> Oh, that's one great. One more? Yeah, let's do another one. Okay, so this one is great, especially if you have a partner helping you out during labor and delivery. Mm -hmm. um, they might be getting tired. This is a great point for them to use their natural body weight to access an acupressure point when they're exhausted. Mm -hmm. And it's located on the top of your shoulder, your trapezius muscle. This is called gallbladder 21. Mm -hmm. And a little trick, I see you've got a shirt that maybe has a little seam on it right here. Yep. Yeah. So find that seam and then halfway between your neck mm -hmm. and your shoulder bone, mm -hmm. halfway between there on that seam is gallbladder 21. Okay. Same thing with this point. It's lurking. You got to access it perpendicular. A lot yeah. of people will just push on it that way and you won't get deep enough. You need to push down. Straight so down. This is where the partner comes in handy <laughs> and they get their elbows. And I bet you're going to talk about laboring and awesome positions to be in. <laughs> if you're just like hanging out on a chair, hanging yeah. out on a ball, just breathing, your partner, your birth partner comes behind you with their elbows and then they yeah. just and use that. Move. Move. You got right. it right on that tippy top of the shoulder blade or excuse me, oh, on the right. shoulder of the trapezius muscle. Yeah. And oh, that's right. just a point to use for massage therapy to relax your muscles, mm -hmm. tension up. Um, but it'll get labor going. It's said to decrease the flow of the chi or energy in the body. And mm -hmm. that's what we want to do with baby. We want baby going down and mm -hmm. so yeah. we get gallbladder 21 to help the energy go that way. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Cool. Well, with the work that I do, it's working with um, birthers, families, um, support people in preparation for labor and birth through movement, through breath, through childbirth education. And um, so one of the main things that I talk about, there's lots of things about preparing for labor, but one of them is learning how to relax, right? And so in general, in a life, it can be really hard, like, like just life happens and we ramp up like this. So like, go ahead and do that with me, Carrie. It's like, just, you know, oh, we get here. So ears. <laughs> exactly. You're like, eh. and not only that, but when this happens, yeah, it's muscular tension, but it's also like the breath gets restricted immediately, right? And like, so we're not breathing, we're like tense like that. And so if we're experiencing something like labor, which is unknown, we, not, if, especially if it's your first time, but any labor is, you never know exactly what it's going to be like, right? But there's also associated with it is things that are painful, right? So contractions, and no matter how people are looking at that, if they're using the word pain or waves or surges, it's intense. <laughs> so in the body kind of will naturally do this. So we also have to have ways that we can help relax the body. So the acupressure points you talked about sound like some really good ones to help with that. Um, and it sounds like, you know, definitely need some partners, um, some birth support people to help with some of those. Um, but also to have some things that you could do in for your own self. So one of them is during pregnancy, practicing noticing what muscular tension feels like and where your where your kind of go-to places are where you hold it. So I know for a lot of people, they talk about how it's like like this. But for other people, they might actually notice that it's in and around their pelvis or they kind of grip in their belly, that kind of thing. So the first part is notice it. And then the next part is going to be, well, how do you then shift out of it? So just kind of wriggle. <laughs> so one thing can be a letting that happen with an exhale that can come out of the mouth and then you just inhale through the nose okay. 
But another thing that can be helpful is actually practicing engage and release. So the engage is on purpose kind of contracting more and consciously than what your kind of baseline holding patterns might be. So let's just kind of do that. We'll do it with a face. We're just going to kind of scrunch and work the face. And again, notice what other parts of your body scrunch. I notice my abs. What else do you notice? Oh, okay. I squeezed my hands together. You went, yeah. Yeah, 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 what I did. <laughs> yeah. My pelvic floor, my, my legs came together like this and my pelvic floor contracted and I was barely breathing. So again, we have ways that we kind of compensate for things that are either scary or uh, painful or unknown. And we can mm, kind of do that. So even just a subtle gripping in the face is going to still have impacts on the rest of the body. So learning that, oh, this is probably going to happen. So some ways to come out of that are like whew, remembering to exhale, breathe, and literally just even this kind of thing. So sit on a birth ball. If you have a birth ball and you're circling your hips and you can gently just whew, rub hands like this. If they're so birth birth so good. Why doesn't I it? I know. And really the jaw too. So if we're tense here, the jaw is going to want to contract. And that is immediately going to want to like whoop put the pelvic floor in our breath. Um, but support people too. Like let's say they're there doing that acupressure point, right? Doing that. Well, somebody might have their head just kind of leaning forward and giving attention to their face like that. And then also um, maybe even between contraction, maybe you can speak more to this like if they're doing this during contractions is there kind of a natural pause in between contractions where they might stop that acupressure point and if there is then maybe it's just a sweeping down you know the arms that they do or the back that they do to help kind of relax and release yeah and in our article we talk about um, the sacrum which yeah. is so important all those nerves coming out and around into the uterus um, yeah. So yeah, incorporating, incorporating the sacrum as you go down the back and massaging into that sacrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the other acupressure points you didn't have a chance to talk about today. Well, that wasn't a point, but it was a, a tool is the tennis ball, right? And rolling around the sacrum. And one thing too is um, for birth support people is taking the tennis ball and like rolling it also around the, I'm going to stand for a second, rolling it around this part of um, where the thigh bone comes and meets the pelvis. Uh, so yeah, just really using some tools that you have to help the muscles kind of release and let go for sure yeah i'm practicing it ahead of time oh that's huge yeah and one thing that i know a lot of folks have said to me after the fact is they were surprised that their immediate response with contractions was to want to freeze and like hold and not move and it was like they had to literally be like no 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 in class we talked about how important movement is <laughs> and breathing and they almost had to be like okay i have to make this happen because innately like at first they, the opposite wanted to happen and how tough is it in labor to get your mind to to do that it would be so much easier if you had the muscle memory yeah. so by practicing it ahead of time that's how we get into relaxing the muscles in the labor and delivery because it's hard to get our brains to yeah. be like oh what did amy and carrie say how yeah. do i do it <laughs> we're practicing it now so you can muscle memory get back into it during mm -hmm. labor yeah. And really, ideally, during labor, we're allowing ourselves to get into more of that primal place where we're not in our thinking cognitive brain, because that can also shift how um, like the hormone releases, too, if we're in a very thinky place, like really being able to drop into the primal, like part of like surrendering, letting go and like being in the process. Oh, yeah. I remember that firsthand when I finally shut it off. And yeah. It, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And support people that can be really helpful with this because they can learn to see where, what, what does, what does tension look like? And that's super helpful to practice ahead of time too, because if they can recognize muscle tension, breath holding, mm, what does the face look like when there's a little like concern or whatever, then they can go in with the support, right? And there's so many things that um, support people can do. And we mentioned it a little bit in the article, but like lots of other things um, that they can do too. Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was really fun and exciting, and we could Thank probably you. talk for hours. <laughs> Do you want to share a little bit, Carrie, about how people can find you and learn more about what you're doing? 
Yeah, sure. Lots of people come to us for their first time to experience acupuncture at their end of pregnancy. It might be because of hip pains, which if there's any way to release those hip pains before labor, mm -hmm. now's the time to do it. Um, people also come to us to just help get ready for labor and delivery. Um, and certainly if you're starting to feel like any kind of tension and stress around a clock ticking, providers are saying, you know, induction time soon, mm -hmm. you might want to check out some acupuncture. Um, so our offices are located in Montpelier and Williston, Vermont, and we're best con connected with um, on the website, acupunctureinvermont.com or here on Instagram at acupunctureinvermont. And we're happy to do phone consults to make sure that it's a good fit or answer any of your questions, either via Instagram messaging or um, hit up the website and contact us. Great. That's great. And folks can get in touch with me through um, Instagram with at Emerge Childbirth. I also have another Instagram page that is focused on the somatics work I do, which is at LePage Amy. Um, and I also am doing these classes live via Zoom, either group or individual sessions. And if you live in the central Vermont area or Vermont, <laughs> um, I am seeing people in person as well. Um, and the website is www.emergewithamylepage.com. So... Lots of great tips out there. You can look for the article that we wrote um, on Instagram, but then also in newsletters. So I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Carrie. Thanks, Amy. Yeah.